If you are interested in receiving a free Bible, make sure you contact me. God bless you. I believe that some people have the wrong understanding of what it is like to live for God. Some people may think that when you live for God, your problems, your anxieties, like everything bad is going to be over. <laughs> Living for God is a very, very long and sometimes a very frustrating process. Very, very frustrating. In some cases, I believe, you may begin to have much more problems, as in spiritual problems. But they may look earthly, but they are spiritual. I believe that there are some teachers teaching some people that when you live for God, you know this prosperity thing when everything is going to be happy everything is going to be peaceful like not really teaching you about the problems you are going to endure pretty much trying to make it seem like when you live for God that everything is going to be happy and joy in so many words and I believe when some people listen to this and when they try to live for God they see that it is not like how people or some people make it seem some people may think hey this person over here is teaching that I am going to get so many stuff or so much stuff or why isn't living for God easy while I may be hearing other people saying that it should be easy. So if something that should be easy is not easy for me, that means that living for God must not be my thing or it should not or I should not even try. I believe this and I can be wrong about this. I believe when you hear a person not teaching on repentance and only teaching on the good things of God you have to be very, very careful of people like that. If you hear of people that teaches you about money and happiness and joy and not teaching on repentance, that should be a really huge warning sign there. If you don't hear a person teaching on repentance, something is wrong. If you don't hear people teaching on the burdens that you may encounter when you serve God, that should be a red flag there. Let's go to Luke chapter 14, verse 33. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the expanded Bible. Now, there is happiness in serving God, but there is so much sacrifice, so much things that you may have to endure, so much sacrifice. And I believe when you elevate higher in God, 
I am telling you, oh, my Lord. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. So what is the saying here? So this goes with what I have been telling you all for quite a while. When you serve God, it is not of convenience. You have to be willing to sacrifice anything, everything. I believe some teachers make you believe that you can keep or you can have what you have now and pretty much in so many words, you don't have to change anything. You don't have to sacrifice anything. Like you can continue on doing as you please and hey, as long as you believe you are going to heaven. That is not true at all. Let me say this. When I was in sin, yes, bad things happened to me, but I did not closely encounter what I encounter now while I serve God. Yes, I reaped what I have sown back in the past when I was in sin. Perhaps not everything, but some things. And I may be reaping some things I may have done while I was in sin. But the spiritual attacks that I believe I receive now is so much more than how it was when I was in sin so much more and some teachers may not tell you that they perhaps in in so many words they make you believe that when you live for god hey happy blue skies in so many words it is not like that because if you have that idea inside of your head, believing that everything is going to be okay for you when you live for God, it is not going to be that way if you live for God in the right way. Now, if you are lukewarm or something like that, then the enemy is not going to attack you as much as true servants of God. This is what I believe. You know, before, in the past, I would try to explain to some people, or yes, some people, so let's say more than three or more, I tried to explain to some people some of the things I go through. And within those people, some people may think, hey, Kevin, are you in sin? And I am thinking, <laughs> when bad things happen to you, it is not always because you are in sin. Was the Apostle Paul in sin always? No. Was Peter in sin always? No. But so many bad things happened today. Was Daniel in sin always? I don't believe so. But bad things happened to him. Sacrifice. When you live for God, you have to sacrifice the things that you want in order to get close to God. I used to like watching movies and 
doing my own thing and stuff like that, but I had to cut that stuff out pretty much. Like secular movies and stuff like that, because I saw that it was pushing me away from God. It was making it much more difficult to follow God's rules because whatever you put in yourself in so many words or somehow you are going to act out what you put in. So like I said before, we have to be careful in the people in the people that we listen to. So if you hear a person not teaching on repentance, like they teach so much on so many things, like you can have this gift, you know, you can have the gift to prophesy, you can see in the spirit, you can do this, you can heal people, but you rarely hear them teach on repentance, that should be a red flag. Teaching on the benefits of God, but not teaching on the basics, that should be a red flag. Living for God is not easy. Not easy, but it is worth it. The more that you excel in God, the more that you are going to see that living for God is worth it, but it is going to take so much sacrifice. And I believe that dealing with people can be very, very hard with particular people. And I believe, and I can be wrong about this, I believe that God tests us with bringing particular people into our lives. And I believe too, that person by God bringing those people into our lives, I believe if you do things right, you should increase in a certain good quality or obtain something from it. Something that you may not have, may not have or had have by obtaining something that you did not have. I guess you can say. For instance, let's say that you have very low patience. So, <laughs> in so many words, God may send you a person that is really, really difficult to deal with. So by dealing with that person, I believe, that is going to increase your patience. So I pray that this makes sense. God bless but you. But make Stop sure here. you tell someone that you love them. God bless you.